what boardroom meeting happened where someone decided, hey, let's make a Dick Cheney movie? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the B-Sides edition. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and on the B-Sides, we'll take a look at new and trending things in shorter, unsponsored episodes. Three down, five to go. It's time to go into the next Oscar Best Picture nominated movie of 2019 with Adam McKay's Vice. What do you say? I want you to be my VP. I want you. You're my vice. Well, George, I, uh... Vice is the story of Dick Cheney, the man who became the vice president of George W. Bush in the early 2000s, and also the man who shot his friend in a hunting accident and never apologized for it. So when I realized what this movie was going to be about, I immediately wondered, why the fuck is there a Dick Cheney movie? This man doesn't have any historical significance from what I understand, and, and frankly, I couldn't care less about muff Dick Cheney. And yet here we are. Vice was nominated for Best Picture, so I had to watch it, and I was surprised because this isn't actually a waste of time. When you take out the fact that this is a movie about a man that nobody really cares about, it actually becomes a fairly entertaining movie with some creative decisions and also some odd decisions, but we'll get to that in a bit. The plot of Vice covers the journey of Cheney as he becomes vice president. What I didn't personally know is that Cheney basically becomes the most powerful vice president in American history. This isn't a good thing either. This man found loopholes that allowed him to basically have intel in just about every part of the government. He also basically single-handedly started the war on terrorism. Um, it, it's pretty insane. Dick Cheney was not a good man. He had very dictatorship qualities about him. And this movie shows us through the use of his actions, but also through the use of satire. In other words, this isn't just a biopic about Dick Cheney. It's a comedy where they're... Why is my door all the way open? In other words, this isn't just a biopic, it's a comedy. And there are times where the comedy really shines through. There was a particular scene where Cheney is talking to a group of people in the office and the narrator, because there's a narrator, says that Cheney is good at making wild, insane ideas sound normal. And he basically says, yeah, basically what we should do is go out to the front lawn of the White House, pull our pants down, put little wigs on our dicks and uh, have a circle jerk. I was like, what? what? What did you just say? And I and I, I like Googled it. I was like, did he really say that in real life? It, it was just satire. Th there are moments like this throughout the movie where it's actually, it's genuinely funny and it catches you by surprise. But then you have things like Steve Carell playing literally anybody in a semi-serious movie. I don't know why they casted him for this role. I mean, he kind of looks like this guy, but uh, it, it, he, I don't, I don't understand it. When the part we I was born to play. <laughs> Speaking of the cast though, overall it's is fairly solid. We do have Christian Bell's performance, which is great. He basically is Dick Cheney. His transformation specifically is extremely impressive. Apparently he put on a bunch of weight just so that he could play this role. Amy Adams as Cheney's wife was pretty good. She was an asshole throughout the entire thing, but I think that was kind of the point. And Sam Rockwell as George W. was perfect. I would say that was more of a Saturday Night Live performance there, but I think it worked really well for the film. Not only was it entertaining, it was also kind of funny. The thing about Vice that concerned me was that I expected to be extremely bored throughout this whole thing. Again, this is a biopic about somebody I don't care about whatsoever. I really want to ingrain that in, in your head. I don't give a fuck about Dick Cheney. Fortunately though, after you get through the first 10, 15, 20 minutes of the film, it actually starts to become interesting in the plot as well as its presentation. This isn't just some beginning, middle, and biopic. Here's Dick Cheney from when he started working in the government to becoming vice president. There's like little bits where it goes out of order and there's a narrator who's pretty funny and he actually does play a big part in the movie. I'm not gonna spoil exactly how though. About two thirds of the way through the film, it does this thing again that I don't want to spoil, but it it catches you off guard. You'll know what I mean if you've seen the movie. There's just this thing at two thirds of the movie where you're like, wait a second, is that all? And it, it was really funny. I, I laughed out loud for a good bit. 
Besides that though, the editing overall is, is pretty great actually. There's a lot of different weird transitions and extra stuff that happens on the screen that had me interested and entertained throughout the whole thing. They took a lot of care in ensuring that a story about a man that a lot of people won't care about is still interesting and entertaining to watch and I really appreciated that. But let's talk about this subject matter right quick because again, like I said earlier, Dick Cheney wasn't a good man and I think that's what Vice aims to show. People my age and maybe even people older than me don't really know the history behind him. I mean, like I said, all I've ever remembered him for is him shooting a guy in a hunting accident and him being vice president once. But apparently there's much more than that. He was this beer chugging college dropout that ended up trying to better himself only for him to basically be power hungry for the rest of his life. And the man's still alive. I'm not quite sure what he's doing now, but I, I don't think that Vice is a movie that's trying to humanize him in any way. I think it uses satire along with the drama elements well enough to show that he caused a decent amount of damage when he was in office. But we're not here to discuss history. This is a film. Luckily though, this these history aspects of it are reasons that make it interesting. They're reasons that it makes it entertaining. And with all that being said, do I think that Vice deserves a Best Picture nomination? I don't think it deserves to win, but I think out of all the movies we've got this year, this is definitely one of them that makes sense to be here. I kind of put this in the same category as movies like Darkest Hour from last year, where they're good and they have entertaining aspects of them, and the lead actor plays their role perfectly, but I wouldn't put this as the best movie of 2018. Honestly, it would be hard for me to rewatch Vice. It was entertaining enough for a first watch, but I don't really intend to ever see it again on my own. And I don't really know anybody that would want to sit down and watch this with me. So I might get it on Blu-ray at some point, but who knows? But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If for whatever reason you didn't like it, you can hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on Vice are. Also, what are your thoughts on all the Oscar nominees so far? Anyways, go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.